What's going on YouTube? Scrammy here coming at you with a quick video review of the Sonom XP10. I was going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the XP8, but as you can see, my XP8 is uh, not really going to function right. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of an issue. Right, so the first thing so I want to talk about here is size. So Sonoms, you know, it's a rugged phone, it's tough, it's going to be chunky. But I have to say, it actually has a little bit slimmer of a profile than the XP8 did. It seems like it's a little more squished and it's got a wider aspect ratio on the screen. So this is an S22 Ultra. So this is one of the biggest phones you can buy and it's in a UAG case. So let's just show you here. You can see the S22 Ultra is quite a bit bigger. When it comes to thickness though, obviously the Sonom is a bit chunkier. And yes, it's already broken. Guys, here's one more quick comparison. Z Fold 4 and the Sonom. As you can see, they're pretty close to the same thickness. So this is like two phones thick. All right, guys. So day-to-day -day usage with the Sonom. How is it? It's really not bad. This is pretty vanilla Android, really. Just standard Google apps and a couple Sonom apps on here just because it is a Sonom device. But it is surprising, being that this one's branded from AT&T, that it didn't come with all of the standard AT&T bloatware like they typically do. So on that side, that is a plus. The screen is good. There's no real issues. The first thing I had to do, though, was adjust the white point on this screen because it seems like it was emitting a good amount of blue light. So the best thing that I think you should do when you get this phone, if you're considering buying it, would be going into the display. Right now we're at 75% brightness. Uh, we'll go down to night light. So if you go and click on this and then the intensity, turn it all the way down so that it's basically off. But look at this difference. See how blue that gets? And now we're actually like white. That makes a huge difference when it comes to the picture quality. It's much more true to true white colors. It mimics more almost like how iPhone has true tone. So real quick, here's a screen size difference between the Samsung Z Fold 4 and the Sonom XP10. A lot of people would say that the Samsung's screen is a little too skinny for them on the front. And you can see that the Sonoms is slightly wider, but you can kind of tell from this that it is a skinnier, taller uh, aspect ratio, which kind of does work better. It's a little bit easier to hold being skinnier. You get a good grip on this thing. And you know, it's even better for like YouTube videos and such. All right guys, and a big thing with Sonom phones here is the speakers. As you can see, these are some big speakers. All the Sonom phones I've ever had, they've always been incredibly loud. And this phone is no exception. It is ridiculously loud to the point of, like it hurts your ears, it's so loud. And if you set an alarm and you have it at a normal volume, it will scare you awake. I'm not joking. It is ridiculously loud. And unlike the previous version, the XP8, which was very bassy, but would definitely lose quality sound quality when you cranked it up this this one is doesn't quite have as much bass but the clarity doesn't go away whether you're at half volume or full volume so let's just give you a little sample from the audio library so now we're going to just start turning it up it's really loud so as you can tell yes that is very loud now day-to-day -day usage on this thing you would have no problem you could go on youtube you can here's my channel you can see it loads it up nice there's really no lag it actually feels like a pretty competent phone and what i mean is you could do multiple tasks on this thing and it really not have an issue with it. 
It's certainly not going to replace like a brand new iPhone or Galaxy Z Fold just because this is a quarter of the price of this. Come on now. And this is not designed like this is. But if you're somebody who surfs the web, listens to music, wants to make phone calls, do the occasional who knows what, you would be perfectly fine with this phone. It's got decent specs. It'll do everything you need to do and more. All right, so what about battery life, you ask? Well, I got to say, if you're a person that doesn't like charging their phone all the time, then this is definitely a phone for you. So check this out. We got 84% battery, and it's estimating more than two days left. More than two days with 84% battery. I don't have a phone anywhere near that much battery life. It's a you know, mid-range spec phone with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's going to last you a long time. Personally, I'd still probably charge it overnight, just like I always do with all my phones. But you could conceivably use this phone day to day, watching videos, playing music, and it would last you a couple days. That's pretty impressive. All right, so some pros and cons with this device. Well, I already mentioned that this isn't an actual button and it confused me, so I kind of see that as a con. Not a big one, but it is kind of annoying. So pros, the screen is bigger than the previous generation, is better than the previous generation. You could use this phone for a couple days without charging it and it would go on just fine. It's built like a tank, except for this piece. It's thick, it's protected, you get a really good grip on this thing. When you're holding it, you feel like you could use it as a hammer. And it's actually not as heavy as you'd think. I have an iPhone 14 Pro Max, or I could even just say this Galaxy Fold. And they're pretty damn similar in weight. So this looks much heavier than it really is. It's just kind of thick. Another con I don't like is the flap, the flap for the charging port. So you got to rip it open to charge it if you don't use the dock. Well, you think that's going to last very long? Probably not. So I proved on my previous phone, my previous Sonom phones, that this isn't really used to keep water out. It's just for debris. I actually did some testing with my XP8 and I unscrewed the little flap at the bottom and threw it in water for a couple hours and it made no difference. So to me, that's just there for some extra protection from dust and debris. Still, I would have liked to have seen a better setup than a little tiny plastic flap. Kinda sus. One of the first things you should do if you get this phone is, you see this red button. If you've had other Sonom phones before, you'd know what this red button does. This is a dedicated emergency button. If you press and hold that button, your phone is going to call the police. Trust me, I know. It's not fun and it happens more than you would think. So my best advice would be to remap this button. You can remap all the buttons on this phone in the settings. Just open up your phone, scroll to settings. Okay, and then we're just going to scroll down to programmable keys. You click that. So here we are, select push to talk key app, select application key, emergency key, press and hold timer. So you can adjust what all these buttons do because if you're not gonna use it as a walkie talkie, why use the push to talk for anything? You could remap it to the camera, to an app, whatever you want. If your life isn't gonna be in mortal danger and you don't have a company phone, well, I personally would make sure the first thing I did was remap this emergency button because again, yes, it's going to call the police. And once you hit it, it's happening. So just be aware. Okay. The previous, nice. The previous generation, this button was on the side and it was even easier to hit. At least it's on the top. So you're less likely to really push it down, but still remap this button button please you won't be buying this phone for the cameras right we actually have an upgrade on the previous one well you can kind of see where the camera was it was a single camera and flash well this flash 
is ludicrously bright, which is great. And we do have two cameras on the back and one on the front. But again, you're really not going to win any awards with this camera. But it's honestly not that bad. It's not a terrible camera, but it's certainly no Galaxy or iPhone. But let's be honest, you shouldn't be buying this phone for that feature. All right, and being that this is a Sonom phone, it has this little adapter here that you can plug in a bunch of different accessories. So like a walkie-talkie or a comms thing, a bunch of different little add-ons and additions to the phone would snap in right here. Well, if you can see, it has this little plastic piece that kind of fits the cutout. Well, you can see how it's a little bit exposed already because this piece is actually just kind of like a sticker. It, I thought it was solid, but it actually it caught on my hand and it, it's, it's actually doing it right now. Just it, a little tiny flap will peel this right up and it fell off. So that's kind of really not great. Um, it was two days in and that piece came off. Obviously, even with this piece completely off, it really isn't harming the phone at all because none of these holes actually go anywhere that are going to make water go inside the phone. It's not how it works. But, I mean, this is the world, supposed to be the world's most rugged phone. How did this little tiny plastic cover just pop right off with almost no effort? You can also see it looks like the injection molding where it got sandwiched together. You can kind of see it there and along the edge and around and the other side. So you can definitely tell it was two pieces squished together. Um, when I first got it, it almost felt a little sharp on the edge there, but a few times in and out of the pocket, and it's pretty much worn away. Nothing too crazy, no harm, no foul. Just a little, uh, I don't know, I wasn't expecting it to seem or to see that, but it, it is wearing away, so I assume it would do the same for you guys. Just a few quick tips with this phone. Just like I spoke about in the beginning, first thing I would do is go into your settings, go to display, dark mode, obviously, dark mode is the best mode ever, and it'll save you more battery. You can go down to nightlight, and again, even though I have it turned all the way down, if I turn it off, you can instantly see how much more blue light goes through it. This is much better. I would say that's probably one of the most important things you could do is turn that on because it makes color accuracy much greater. What you can also do is program your keys. Like we spoke before, you should do this because if you're not going to actually be using these keys for anything useful, you might as well let them do something that, well, you could use them for. And as we continue to scroll down here, we can go into the system applications and down here with gestures. So again, you can turn gestures on or have the buttons. I prefer gestures. You can have physical, well, not physical buttons, but actual buttons will appear down here. But I, I don't like that because I'm just wasting screen space. I don't like it. So I prefer gestures. If you don't use gestures, it comes automatically with the three button navigation already put on there. I just switch it to gestures because I prefer them and I like it better. So now, after you've gone into about phone, scrolled all the way down to build number, hit it about seven, eight times, it'll say you are now a developer. Then go into system settings. Now you see developer options. You go into here, you turn this on, and now you can kind of force the phone to do certain things that it normally would not have allowed you to do. So you can adjust all sorts of things in here. Most of them you probably don't really need to touch because they won't do too much. But if you're really into, you want to know some stats or you want to change exactly how your phone works, you can go into your developer options. And as we scroll through here, you can see we can turn all of these things on or off. Wi-Fi scan throttling, that's something you'd want on. 
So this reduces battery drain and improves network performance. So it would turn that on. Mobile data always active. If you do not have an unlimited data plan, well, then I would turn that off. All this is doing is meaning you're connected to the internet even when you're on Wi-Fi. But it's in an effort to keep you uh, going as fast as you possibly can. I have unlimited data, so I don't mess with it. I'll leave it on. But if you don't, that is something that will come on on the phone and you couldn't turn it off unless you got into developer options. So if you want a little more fluidity, then you can leave these all on 1X. Or if you want no animations, you turn them all the way off. Or if you want the phone to feel a bit faster without it really actually being faster, I guess you could say, half time your animations. It will make the phone seem much faster. Things will load up faster. It won't do as long of an animation when you click and touch things because let's be honest, why do we need that? We don't really need it at all. But in developer options, you have the ability to turn those down or completely off. You can adjust how many background processes you want going on on your phone. You can do background checks. You can force apps to do things, force desktop mode. And you can go all the way down to things with GPS. So that's just a neat little trick. If you know anything about phones or you want to just mess with this phone and see what it can do, you can open up developer options. So overall, what do I think of this phone? Well, it's definitely better than my XP8. I can tell you that. I think this phone for pretty much an everyday user would be perfectly fine. Like I said, it pops everything up, it loads. We don't really have much of an issue. There's not really any lag. It's a pretty decent phone. I think Sonom has come a long way. If you've been with Sonom, if you've always had a flagship phone, you're not going for this phone. But if you've always had a Sonom phone or just you wanted a phone that would work, maybe it doesn't have the best camera, maybe it doesn't have the biggest RAM or best processor, but this thing is 5G, it gets great signal, it has great speakers, it does multiple tasks, the screen is nice. I don't really have any problems with this phone. I could use this as a daily driver and be just fine. Just this kind of bugs me that this piece fell off. I may even see if Sony would honor their warranty of, you know, it's unconditional three-year warranty that if you break this thing, they will replace it with a new one or another one without you having to do anything other than send the old one in. So again, this, maybe you'll have better luck and that won't happen to you, but it happened to me. So that's annoying. You should definitely change your emergency button. But beyond that, it's a pretty solid phone. I, uh, I like it. At first I was like, eh. But now that I've used it and I've gotten a feel for it, I really actually like this phone. And it definitely could be a daily driver for quite a few people. Um, it has everything you need and nothing more that you really don't. It is going to get you everything done. It's like the 85 percenter. It pretty much does everything just fine. If you want the best specs, though, I would stay away from this phone. Personally, I could use this phone every day and not have a problem. So in that aspect, it's a decent phone. I don't mind it. It's thick. It brings up tons of questions from onlookers and people who don't know what it is. So that's cool. And enough of this review. Now we're just going to go into smashing and bashing this thing until it is no more.